For the first few decades of its existence, gaming was ruled by sound bites and catchphrases. Arcade cabinets were adorned with iconography of now legendary characters like Pac-Man or Street Fighter as Ryu. Seriously, think about how many games you can identify through sound alone today versus the <laughs> of Pac-Man's chomping, Sonic's <laughs> or Ryu's Hadouken! Back then, the industry didn't have the attention of the world, but it was damn determined to get it. Over time, that mentality would fold into more move lists, abilities, and genres, as every character or franchise needed a specific thing, something only they could pull off to really succeed. Charged up shots, grappling hooks, knee slides, cover shooting, flame punches, limit breaks, kill streaks, turning into a bat. The language of gaming's best abilities is one we all speak, and you only get more fluent the more you play. So in celebration of everything from double jumps to focus aiming modes and all things in between, I'm Scott from Walk Culture.com, and these are the 17 most iconic signature moves in video game history. Number 17, the Chainsaw Finisher, Gears of War. Just look at this beautiful thing. The sheer gory glory of introducing a whirring chainsaw gun to the flesh of the evil locust remains one of gaming's most owned up to guilty pleasures. Back when Gears was first demoed, series writer Joshua Ortega noted that the Lancer was pretty much the new lightsaber in terms of being a super cool original weapon that would dominate mainstream entertainment. He wasn't wrong either, the rollickingly massive gun with an undermounted chainsaw belt became an instant favourite, catapulting Epic Games' baby into new realms of appreciation for violence lovers around the world. Number 16, Sam Fisher's Split Jump, Splinter Cell. Over the course of three main Splinter Cell games, Fisher's Split Jump went from being a strange timing-based move that only a handful of us could pull off, across to Chaos Theory where Ubisoft would let anyone do it with just one button press. This was the best decision though, because until Ubisoft took mercy on us, too many Fishers were listlessly hopping on the spot in corridors of varying widths, just hoping it was going to trigger. It was a beautifully useless sight, but leading a bunch of guards into a room, knocking all the lights off and disappearing above them, that is stealth game royalty. Number 15, Agent 47's Fiber Wire Kill, Hitman. Back in 2016, we saw the return of the famous slap-headed killer, no, it's not Jules playing me at Marvel vs. Capcom, as despite some initially rocky sales, both the first and second installments of the new Hitman are the best in the franchise by a country mile. Seriously, if you were ever a fan of Hitman ever, go check out these newest entries. They're spectacular and genuinely impressive, especially when it comes to killing your targets. Yes, you can now blow a flying foe out of the sky with a cannonball, rig some surgical equipment to gouge a patient to death, or just push one target off a cliff onto another target, but nothing compares to the professional signature execution of using fiber wire. Number 14, The Fart, Abe's Odyssey. Don't act like you didn't spam the fart button like some pop-happy child back in 1997. We all did. Hell, everyone who plays any of Abe's outings will always look at the control scheme, noting that there's a fart option, and then proceed to jab at it while giggling until they're blue in the face. The best part, though, was seeing how the various enemies around you reacted to farting on the spot. The gun-toting slags would think that they were being talked to, Abe and his fellow mudikins would chuckle heartily, best of all, one of the game's puzzles actively required that you possess your own gas for the sake of piloting it towards some explosive mines. It's all very because video games, and it's just brilliant. Number 13, The Leap of Faith. Assassin's Creed. Initially, I was going to go for the double assassination or the aerial kill, but you really can't talk about any Assassin's Creed without thinking back on just how much of an impact it made in 2007, thanks to the uber slick Leap of Faith animation that we just couldn't get enough of. Not only was scouring the city from a few hundred feet up endlessly satisfying, but diving off and hearing a distant eagle accompanying your death defying drop was an addictive sensation that would help Ubisoft deliver sequels to this day. Number 12, Cloud Strife's Victory Fanfare, Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII made such a cultural impact back in 97, literally the entire Western Hemisphere had to take a few years to adjust. Square's first 3D take on their already perfected turn-based formula defined thousands of childhoods and enamored every last one of Cloud's actions into our brains forevermore. However, there's just one move that made you know that you were playing as one of the greatest characters of all time, and it comes at the end of every fight. Number 11, Solid Snake's Neck Snap, Metal Gear Solid. That is the sound of Solid Snake making his mark on the industry. Back in the 90s, hardly anyone had really considered the idea of stealth being a viable way to play. And despite there being two former Metal Gear games that were making waves with critics and certain subsets of fans, it was Hideo Kojima's first PlayStation outing that turned out to be a bona fide masterpiece. Number 10, Crash's Spin Attack, Crash Bandicoot. It's questionable whether Sony's first console would have made so much of an impact if not for one of the finest lineups of exclusive characters this side of Nintendo. 
As such, Naughty Dog, who were developing Crash completely unaware of his impending success, prioritized performance and graphical fidelity, ensuring that Orange Marsupial's first outing would remain one of his finest. Crash's initial repertoire wasn't very expansive, but the appeal of the game hung purely on feel. From the second you broke through a handful of crates or took out a wayward crab with his now signature spinning attack, that was a sensation that helped carry the PlayStation into the history books. Well, that and what have we got? Number 9, Morph Ball, Samus Aran, the Metroid series. Now, yes, it might look like it's been coded into a particularly thick stack of ham these days, but back in 1986, the idea of exploring large space-age caverns was like stepping into another world. Playing as the instantly badass Samus Aran was just icing on the cake. Then you got your hands on the awesome Morph Ball ability, and suddenly everything about how you were even interacting with the levels totally changed. Yes, the fact Samus turns into a ball kinda means she has to contort herself into ways the human body should never be in, but come on, it's a fully controllable ball. No? You can tell you guys never played Cooler World. Number 8, Bullet Time and Shoot Dodging, Max Payne. Although The Matrix would like to be remembered for inventing bullet time, any gamer will tell you that Max Payne got there first. The term shoot dodge was quickly coined for the act of Max leaping in all sorts of directions, watching him slow time to a crawl as bullets licked past his ears and returning fire peppered all of his opponents, the entire thing being one giant tornado of gunpowder and meaty sound effects. Ah, the good old days of developers actually experimenting with genuinely brand new game mechanics. I remember them well. Number 7, Lara Croft's Swan Dive, Tomb Raider. The original Tomb Raider games are incredibly unforgiving when it comes to placing Lara in exactly the right spot to make the next jump. It was designed to really make you feel like you were just making it through some massively impressive 3D environments, and the devs put a handful of secret animations in just so you could show off when mastering the climbs themselves. One example was an optional handstand you could do by holding multiple buttons, and another was this balletic swan dive, a great move that's been included all the way up to 2018's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Number 6, Light Light Heavy. So many characters from so many games. Okay, so what's the first thing anyone's gonna do in a game with light and heavy attacks? Combine two of the former and one of the latter, every single time. I can't think of a single game comprising light and heavy attacks that doesn't let you combine them, and if you want a recent example that we all love to deploy and overuse, it's God of War's Plume of Prometheus. You might not know it by name, but this easily became the entire franchise's kill move of choice. It even makes a return when you get the Blades of Chaos back in 2018's God of War, and is even more satisfying to bust out with a beastier Kratos behind the chains. Number 5, Sonic Spin Dash, Sonic the Hedgehog. There was something about holding down and hitting the charge button for Sonic Spin Dash that just let you know shit was about to go down. Loop-to-loops could be darted around in seconds, rings collected in their abundance, entire levels could be clocked in seconds once you knew the layout. Sonic was at his high-octane best in the 2D realm, and as the biggest appeal to the character was making him go as fast as possible, revving this up like nobody's business felt like unleashing the world's most powerful bottle rocket every single time. Number 4, Get Over Here, Scorpion, Mortal Kombat. If you ever want to get a read on just how old a room of gamers are, ask them whether or not they remember Scorpion's iconic catchphrase as being Get Over Here, or the shorter Come Here from the home release of the original two Mortal Kombat games. The iconic phrase was actually recorded by series creator Ed Boon, as due to time and budgetary restraints, he had to get behind the mic to deliver it himself. Get over here! Over the years, the soundbite has remained largely the same, with Boon always being on hand to record newer versions as audio technology advanced. Number 3, Ground Pound Slash Butt Stomp, Super Mario. Whatever you want to call this, I'm encapsulating all of Mario's aerial maneuvers into one, going from the 1985 original that let you drop kill any unsuspecting enemies, to Mario 64's far more pronounced butt stomp, or Smash Brothers' straight up ground pound. Basically, whenever you see a platformer give you the ability to fell an enemy by landing on them from above, that came from Super Mario Brothers. Whether that be an actual attack or just positioning yourself above an enemy, this initial move has seen literally thousands of permutations across gaming history, and is one of the most recognizable of all time. It's all pretty fitting being that Mario himself is easily the most iconic character overall, but there are a couple of moves that I still want to throw up. Number 2, Fuzro Dar, Dragonborn, from Skyrim. From knee-obliterating arrows to underground cities and one of the most expansive sets of character abilities ever, Skyrim was, and still is, the complete RPG package. However, some of the most fun abilities to unleash on the various denizens of Tanriel were the Dragon Shout, or more specifically, Unrelenting Force, Bethesda's more powerful version of a Star Wars Force Push. By unlocking all three tiers of this ability, you could do anything from launching giant spiders over cliffsides to sending innocent civilians pinwheeling across a market square. I definitely wholeheartedly recommend the latter. And number one, Hadouken! Ryu from Street Fighter. 
Hardly any games can be identified just by a single soundbite. Unreal Tournament's headshot, Mario's mushroom grab, Crash Bandicoot's mask noise, nothing compares though to the sheer power behind Hadouken! Ryu's fireball conjuring special that let you know you'd best get out the way. The move was apparently inspired by Japanese anime Space Battleship Yamato, as its neon burst laser cannons endeared themselves to creator Manabu Takamura, who wanted to create a move that would always own the screen no matter what. Thankfully, around 30 years later, watching Ryu belt out a fireball through sheer force of will is one of the most recognizable video game moves of all time. And that's my list. Let me know down in the comments below if there were any other video game character moves or abilities that you think should be thrown up as the most iconic. As for now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.